Father's useless at that. He'd live with any old rubbish. That's certainly true. <laughs> I had to practically stand over them to make sure they did it properly. But I think they appreciated it in the end, didn't they, Stanley? Hmm. What did Mr Noakes say to you? He said he'd work with his fair share of mad bitches, but you were something else altogether. <laughs> Now, where's my darling Precious? I've got him a lovely new brush. Oh, he and George should be back soon. Actually, there's something I wanted to warn you about. Hello, Mrs Dawkins. Hello, Mr Dawkins. Look who's here. What's happened to his coat? He'll catch his death. Yeah, that was what I wanted to warn you about. I'm afraid his coat got ruined in the wash. I thought you burnt it. <laughs> so then I burnt it. Oh, you are careless, Janet. Well, we'll just have to get him another one. I'm not having him going out naked. Actually, I think he looks really good naked. You what? Well, not because he's naked. Without his coat on. And he's much happier without it. Really? He's told you that, has he? As a matter of fact... Well, he just seems happier, Mum, that's all. <laughs> Rubbish. I've known Biggles all his life, and Biggles loves wearing his coat. Ah, uh, that's another thing. His name's not Biggles. It's Malcolm. <laughs> Malcolm. Just drop it, George. You've renamed my dog Malcolm. No, that's his name. He told me. You, you may find this hard to believe, but somehow, and obviously I've no idea how, but I seem to be able to understand what he's saying when he barks and whines. And what's he saying now? He doesn't like his new brush. That's amazing. You can understand them too. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Now, we've had your room done up, Precious. You and Ollie can move back in whenever you like. I'm not staying here listening to this. Come along, Biggles. Come to Mummy. We're going home. I said, come on, Biggles, come to Mummy. He says he's asserting himself. He's not coming until you call him Malcolm. I said, come on, Biggles. You may have stolen my daughter from me, but you are not stealing my dog. Come on, Stanley. I'll just get this Come stuff. on, Stanley. I wish I had rabies, I'd bite her. Morning. Morning. Been to see Dr. Crispin before? No. Oh, he's very good. Is it the eye? Yes. Oh, he'll soon sort that out for you. As soon as you've got all your clothes off and he's done a thorough examination, he'll soon sort you out. <laughs> My clothes off? It's a puffy eye. Yeah, well, he says that the whole body's interconnected, especially in the case of ladies, so he likes to see the whole thing. <coughs> He's ever so good. I haven't been feeling too well myself of late. When I looked up my symptoms home, it said I had bubonic plague. <laughs> <laughs> but the doctor just took one look at me yesterday and said, no, it's probably just a cold. <laughs> and the doctor always knows best, doesn't he? So where's the new receptionist? Oh, she's running a bit late again. Someone, and I have a fairly shrewd idea who, phoned her and told her that the clinic had burnt down. Stop her, Piers. Have her done for harassment or something. Can you imagine the court case? What might she say? She might mention that patient I misdiagnosed. But Mr Long, you said it was rheumatism. He had a broken leg. OK, the two patients I misdiagnosed. <laughs> no, I'm just going to ride this one out, Janet. In fact, I think she's beginning to tire of it. She hasn't been in for a couple of days, and OK, she may have frightened away that patient when she collapsed. But we've got plenty more. OK, let's be having you. <laughs> this place was full a minute ago. I know. I thought I'd have to wait hours to see you. <laughs> no? Looks like I'm next. You know what you are, Mrs Raven. You are the quintessence of evil. Can I have my job back? When can you start? I'll go and get changed. <laughs> Janet, have you seen that idiot husband of yours? No, why? Because we think the dog is with him. Oh, not again. Ever since we took him home yesterday, he's done nothing but run back to George. He ran back to your flat last night. I know. Did he wake you? No, we were awake, but it wasn't the best moment. <laughs> I knew it. Give me back my dog, George Sunday. You're a naughty boy. You're a very naughty boy. He's not naughty. He's asserting himself. Shut up. Stanley, put his coat on. Now, come here, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't come any closer, Stanley. Don't you tell me what to do. I said, come here, you stupid dog. <laughs> I didn't warn you. George, do 
something. Biggles <laughs> down. His name's not Biggles, it's Malcolm. Oh. Shut up! Get him off! Uh, oh, there's a good boy. <clears throat> don't worry, Stanley, you'll be fine. I don't know what you've done to that dog, but you've turned him into an animal. He was always an animal. He, he's a dog. Oh, what do you know what I mean? A mad dog. I know only one thing to do with a mad dog, and that's having destroyed. But he, he can come and live with us, can't he, Janice? George, what have you done? I'll take him down the vets now. I really don't think you should do that, Stanley. Oh, Piers, thank you so much. The vet will charge a fortune. I can do it much cheaper. <laughs> I have nothing else to do. He was more than a pet. He was a friend. And now I've killed him. You gotta stop blaming yourself, George. It was the dog that chewed on the guy's nut cluster, not you. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. It, but I did tell him to assert himself. Okay, it was your fault. Yeah, you killed him, you big... <laughs> did he have any last message for you? Yeah, like, thanks, pal. Thanks a bunch. No, I left before they did it. I couldn't bear to look at his little face. Oh. So maybe he isn't dead. Listen, I read about this guy that was given a lethal injection and they gave him the wrong stuff and it didn't kill him. It just turned him into a vegetable. That, that's no comfort, Arnie. I was a vegetable in a previous life. Chinese cabbage. That's not nice at all. Will you both please just stop it? If you can't think of anything comforting to say, well then don't say anything at all. There is one thing you could do, Almighty One. Yes? As a way of honouring Malcolm, you could ask for his body back and instead of burying him, He'd have him stuffed. Mm. <laughs> served with fries and all the trimmings. It'd be like a meal at a memorial service, all rolled into one. <laughs> Janet, was it painless? George, you've been using that new zip it thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's great. You should use it more often. Sorry, what were you saying? Did he die peacefully? He isn't dead, George. Piers couldn't do it. <sighs> Good old Piers. No, no, he wanted to. He just didn't have the right drugs. <laughs> Take him to the vets tomorrow. I've got to rescue him. Don't worry, Janet. I know exactly where to take him to. Who to take him to. We may never see him again, but at least he'll be happy. not seen the dog. How could he? I thought you had him chained to the radiator. What do you mean someone melted the chain? <laughs> and the radiator. Got a bit worked up. She says the living room's flooded. They've got to get the decorators back in. Oh, I don't know, Mum. Maybe Thermo Man dropped by and rescued the dog. She said, don't be silly and slam down the phone. <laughs> what? Where were we? I was just touching you there. Oh, yes, so you were. <laughs> That's nice. No dog, just you and me. Oh, did you hear something? Oh, please, George, Malcolm's gone. Whatever it is, just ignore it. Better just check. 